Hi, welcome to FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. The day of Michael Brown's funeral in Ferguson, Missouri, the New York Times saw fit to tell readers that Brown was no angel. The piece detailed some of Brown's less than angelic habits, living in a community with rough patches, and nearly getting into a fight. After a storm of criticism, the paper's public editor and even the writer of the piece agreed that the language, which was playing off an anecdote about Brown seeing an image of an angel in a storm cloud, was a poor choice. But this wasn't the first time the Times showed curious judgment in their coverage of Michael Brown. A piece on August 19th reported that witnesses have given investigators sharply conflicting accounts of the killing. But the Times didn't produce much evidence for the idea that Brown was threatening Officer Darren Wilson. Critics of the piece, most prominently MSNBC host Lawrence O'Donnell, pointed out that this account seems to come from the shooter himself, Darren Wilson. The Times wasn't alone in spreading sketchy information that seemed to support Wilson's case. Right-wing outlets declared that Wilson suffered a fractured eye socket in his confrontation with Michael Brown. But the story spread. Tonight we are hearing from a source close to the police officer who shot Brown. And this source says the policeman's face was seriously injured. And the source says that could change this case. Reporter Jim Avila described the evidence. A hospital picture of Officer Wilson's face not yet released. A source close to Wilson says the officer suffered a serious facial injury during the initial struggle at the patrol car window. ABC doesn't have this photo. It's not even clear that they've seen it. It sounds like they haven't. So this is a story defending Wilson based on what a single source close to Wilson says about a photo. Since that piece aired on August 20th, ABC has yet to follow up on its big scoop. If you caught the August 29th cover of Newsweek magazine, you may have wondered what year it was. Yes, that's really a story about African immigrants bringing a deadly disease into this country, and yes, they put a chimpanzee on the cover. But hold on. Newsweek is saying they're trying to warn us about a very real threat. Wild game, or what some call bushmeat, is illegally imported from some countries in Africa into places like New York. And that's how Ebola could travel. The problem is that there's no evidence for this. Newsweek alludes to a memo from 1997 that circulated among customs officers and agriculture specialists. It also says that this particular strain of Ebola is suggesting bushmeat was the source. They get that from a Reuters piece, which doesn't actually say that. A virologist cited in that article says, as most other experts seem to, that exposure to infected animals, especially bats, is the most likely source of transmission of Ebola to humans. Newsweek's article attracted plenty of criticism. When Newsweek senior editor Elijah Wolfson went on a BBC show, he seemed to back away quite a bit. I would say that um, the risk for contracting Ebola virus by eating or handling bushmeat that arrives in the U.S. through illegal importation is minimal. But that doesn't mean it, it is a zero risk. Perhaps they're changing their headline to smuggled bushmeat unlikely to spark a U.S. epidemic. And finally, with Labor Day approaching, we were wondering, how often do you see labor leaders appear on TV news? So we decided to check the Sunday morning chat shows for this year. And the answer was never. Not a single union leader appeared on any of the shows, which managed to, every so often, talk about issues that matter to workers. The minimum wage, inequality, college athletics. Unions were talked about, often quite critically, but they weren't there to speak for themselves. The Sunday shows did, however, find time to hear the views of corporate America. CEOs, current and former, made about a dozen appearances. We got a lot of numbers about the economy this week, but not a clear picture of where we stand. To help sort it out, we brought in two of America's leading business executives. Now, it wasn't a total shutout for unions. One labor leader did get a mention on one program during this ABC pundit quiz. Yes, the famously anti-union Ronald Reagan. Happy Labor Day, everyone. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.